Bhutan is a place of awesome natural beauty and rich cultural heritage. Nearly three quarters of the country's land is undeveloped, a measure enforced by the national constitution. And even in its cities, traditional art, architecture, fashion, and spirituality play important roles in daily life. Visitors soon learn about the concept of gross national happiness, a term coined by His Majesty Jigme Singhi Wangchuk to describe the kingdom's priorities of public well-being over economic consumption. My name is Sebastian Beckwith. In 1999, I founded a company called In Pursuit of Tea with the mission of sharing spectacular teas from remote regions of the world. Few places are more remote than Bhutan, a mountainous nation in the Himalayas, lodged between China and India. This is the story of a unique tea that's made there and how a tea can change the lives of the people who grow it for the better. While working as an adventure travel guide in Bhutan in the mid-1990s, I heard an offhand comment about an old tea garden in the central region. I was intrigued. Bhutan lies close to the tea regions of Darjeeling and Assam, but has little homegrown tea of its own. After pressing people for more details, I was told that the tea plants had been cut down long ago. But I decided to go and look for myself. A long drive from Tonks to town led me to the royal family's former winter palace. At the time, it was only inhabited by a gomchen, a monk who taught a handful of children inside. He didn't know of any tea on the grounds, but in the next field, right by the house, I spotted something familiar. Lush with deep green leaves and overgrown into trees 20 feet tall, here were the tea plants cultivated by the second king in the 1950s, and they were alive. I started working with the Ministry of Agriculture to propagate these neglected trees into the beginnings of a tea garden. A few years later, a Korean botanist came to the area to offer technical support and teach the locals how to make green tea. By 2012, the Ministry of Agriculture had built a standalone processing facility and local customers began to visit from towns near and far to taste and purchase the tea. Currently, the facility functions as a cooperative of 27 women, all whom pick and process 40 acres of tea plants on land they own themselves. They pluck two leaves in a bud by hand, then wither and pan fire them to halt oxidation. The leaves are then rolled by hand or a small machine, pan fired again, and finished with exposure to hot air until fully dried. Gross national happiness aside, life is not easy in rural Tongsa. The co-op members other crops, a mixture of corn, wheat, barley, and kitchen vegetables, don't sell for much on the open market. They eschew fertilizers and pesticides less out of principle than for lack of capital. In this economic landscape, a crop like tea isn't just an intriguing drink, it's a potential path to greater self-sufficiency. On our last trip in April of 2019, co-op members proudly shared that they'd completely sold out of their stock in the last several years and that a number of local farmers have expressed interest in growing tea of their own. We recently sponsored a trip for four of the co-ops leaders to our friends Bachan and Lochan Gowali's tea production facility in Nepal to talk shop and learn more about tea making from the experts of the Junchabari estate. Progress in the village is still slow, but when it comes to a product as complex as tea, that's not a bad thing. We're excited to share this unique tea with the West and are honored for the opportunity to support this community agricultural endeavor. It's a rare chance for us all to foster a new tea tradition and to watch it thrive. To learn more about Bhutan and to try this amazing tea for yourself, visit InPursuitOfTea.com.